Hi there, welcome to The Bridge. Thank you so much for tuning in and if this is your first time, my name is Nomlindi and on The Bridge we talk about the transition from high school to university and we talk about those experiences and how to jump over. So today I'm going to be talking about uh, going to university or coming to university and anxiety and dealing with that, how it affects my life and how I have managed to mostly overcome social anxiety and how it happened. But before I even begin, I'd just like to say a huge disclaimer. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, tra I'm not studying anything close to psychology. So whatever I say, if I say the wrong things, I'm sorry. I'm probably going to use incorrect terminology to explain, you know, this condition, social anxiety. Um, again, I know of people, or I've watched people maybe on YouTube and stuff who have a much more severe um, form of social anxiety. Um, and so I recognize that my social anxiety might be looking and be like, girl, that is, that is nothing. But I believe that every single experience, whether it be mild, whether it be severe, whether it be middle ground, like, it has an impact in, on each of our lives somehow. So I don't believe any experience should be disregarded or invalidated. So let me start all the way. Um, I did have anxiety in high school, uh, just general anxiety, but it got the social anxiety aspect began during COVID times. And I believe it started like that for majority of us, right? It's having to isolate, having to be in your own house or be in your room for months and months on end, having to avoid that social interaction. I think it, the lack of exposure to it made us fear it, right? And so it started, um, I matriculated in 2020, but I went to university in 2021. And basically those two years were COVID times, right? And so immediately I step into university and majority of my classes are online. So I have moved to a completely different city and I'm in my own room and I don't really go out much, right? I don't really, I don't go to parties because I have no friends in this new city. I knew absolutely no one, no family, no friends. And it's, it's just me really. And so I step into this new season of my life and I'm not really talking to many people and there are some friends that are still are coming into my life which were absolutely ble blessings um but even with them i wasn't really spending a lot of time as much time as i would have liked to because i was just scared of social interaction in a way um i would really isolate i would i would isolate a lot during that year and yeah, it, it made me fear social interaction. Um, and it started becoming worse. So social anxiety for me would be the fear of social interaction and all that comes with it. So for me, it was the fear of judgment, the fear of humiliation, the fear of embarrassment, the fear that I would say something inappropriate and have to apologize for it later. Um, it has to do with fear, right? For me, it's different from introversion because I am an introvert for the most part. Um, that means I prefer being alone most times and I prefer to recharge by being alone. But this is different from social anxiety because anxiety is not driven by, is not driven by preference. It is driven by the fear of something, right? Well, in, I could be wrong and I apologize if I am. Uh, but for me, it was that kind of way. And so, yeah, like, I think it hurts. Social anxiety hurts because one of the main things that I experienced was people seemed to be moving on in their lives. Um, they go out, they have social interaction, they seem to be having fun. And I'm just, yeah, not really going out, not really talking to people much. And it is frustrating and it is sad, right? Because it's not that I don't want that for myself, it's that I fear stepping out. So 
how is it impacting my life now or how has it impacted my life after COVID is that it's still there but not as extreme as it was and I'll let you know about what what was the biggest trap or the biggest hurdle with overco- overcoming social anxiety that I had to overcome um and that was something called catastrophizing right so when I was in my room in 2021 and I would think of all the things that could possibly go wrong if I went out. Like I would think, like I said, what if I trip and fall? What if I, I don't know, spit while I'm talking and everyone sees it? What if I, you know, just what if embarrassing things happen to me while I'm out? Like just worst case scenario things, man. And I had to go out over and over and over again. And when those worst case scenarios were not happening i had to realize like oh like this is not as bad as i thought it was like the things that i feared the most don't seem to happen right and that there's imperfection in every social interaction so in every social interaction there's going to be times where i speak at the same time as the other person or i um just like i accidentally spit what i'm talking like these are human things Like, these are just, it it happens that way, right? Um, So that was the biggest hurdle, I think, was something, it was catastrophizing. Like, just thinking worst case scenario. But overcoming that means, even through the uncertainty, still going out and still being like, you know what, no matter what happens, like, let me just try. But it does creep up now and again, and the anxiety is still there. And if you're coming to university, when I came to university, it was from a pond to an ocean. And what I mean by that is it was pond where everything is familiar. The people are familiar, the friends. I see the same friends every single day. I walk into the same environment every single day. And there's the same 20 to 40 people every single day. Um... And so when I came to university, it's like, yo, new people, no one familiar, new place, new city, new environment, new atmosphere, um, varsity, a place where you see new people every single day. Like it's like you never know everyone here. You, you just know a couple of friends that you have and dealing with that instability, like getting used to that constant change just triggers anxiety again and again and again and daily like or i would say weekly it is a struggle some days i think the worst thing that anxiety causes is some days i don't even want to go to lectures like i have to fight with myself to attend lectures to be like it like just go out but what if this happens what if i embarrass myself like this what if I humiliate myself like what if this happens in class what if you know this happens and people look at me and it's it's like just go just go in that uncertainty go and again when I go then the my worst fear doesn't happen it just proves to me again like look you thought this would happen and it didn't happen so clearly the the fears they, they're wrong right or they're not wrong but yeah they just they they don't happen. Um, so yeah, um, how else does it affect me? I just constant self consciousness. You know, how do I smell? How do I look? Um, how do people perceive me? How do um, just you know, I nothing that makes me stand out to be scrutinized. It, this even affected the way that I dressed. And it still does. Um, I would tell myself to not dress in a way that drew attention. Because then when I drew attention, I would draw judgment as well. So I would mostly wear black. I still do mostly wear black. Um, or sweatpants. I would wear a lot of sweatpants. Just just that I, could, I, I didn't look... I didn't stand out. Right? Or people wouldn't look at me. Or anything like that. So if you're going through this... Um, I would, especially when going to university, I would say you are not alone. I think that is 
the biggest thing that I can tell you is that you are not alone. I have met people who are also going through this. I think a majority of university students, and I could be completely wrong, a majority of university students do struggle with anxiety, whether it be social, whether it be just general, just anxiety um, is, or about stressing about how they are perceived or a fear of judgment or humiliation. I think it is more common than we think. I want you to know that it is possible to work through social anxiety. And although we always want complete healing from social anxiety, it is possible to, to work through it and to become better. It is possible to become better. Like me, I still struggle with aspects of it, aspects of anxiety, aspects of social anxiety, but it was it's not nearly as bad as it was in 2021 where i wouldn't go out and i would um sometimes eat less just so that i wouldn't have to walk the three minute walk to checkers um because i just socially i was like i, I just can't face anyone today it is celebrating the small wins when you go out when you don't want to go out you know when you walk to the store when you didn't want to go to the store not because of laziness but because of that fear of social exposure even just being exposed out there is I think um celebrating the small victories I remember I would leave the home I would leave Riz and I would go to let's say like an event and I would just I would just be like you know what I just showed up that in itself for me today is an is a win the fact that I just showed up the fact that you just showed up to that lecture is a win for the day like just take the win and celebrate it right? and that is to learning to come out of my comfort zone is the 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 catalyst for for change and for quick changes going against myself sometimes in the fact that I would have certain fears and it's like, okay, you have this fear. Well, let's go out and test it or let's go out and see if it really happens. And it can be the scariest thing ever because in my mind, it felt so real. Like this is a real possibility. And then I go out and then nothing happens. And I'm like, oh, so I can be wrong. You know, my imagination can be wrong. My fears can be wrong. Um, it's just, yeah. So anyways, that is anxiety um that is not even half of it i think we should definitely do more videos talking about it and really digging deep into it um and how it affects students specifically especially in university how, how, how it affects people here i know i'm not the only one um but i really hope as you come into university or whether you're already in university to so take it one step at a time and to realize that you will be okay and to realize that you are probably your own worst critic because people don't judge you nearly and then most of the time people don't judge you nearly as harshly as you judge yourself and the people who do judge you harshly probably and usually don't are not doing any better themselves um i think people judge harsh people judge other people harshly when they have their own insecurities because i know that i judge other people harshly when i have not dealt with my own insecurities and judging others is a way to make me feel better about myself so no one wins right um but yeah anyways that was quite a video i hope you're doing okay i hope that this year goes well for you happy new year <laughs> in february um but yeah thank you so much for watching if you have any comments have anything to say anything to add anything to criticize and to disagree with then please type it in the comments below if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos please type it in the comments below um but yeah i'll see you in the next video Bye. take care of yourself take care of yourself.